Hey, Type of 3 people. This time around, we're going to take a look at checkboxes, which doesn't sound that interesting, but it is. Trust me. Stay with me. So checkboxes are a very, very commonly used thing in Type 3's backend. And there's a couple of things where Type 3 still does stuff that's, you know, not that perfect. And I'm going to give you a quick example. So I'm on the typo3.com homepage. It runs on the current version 8 of Typo 3. And if we edit a page and scroll down a bit, I can set a checkbox which excludes this page path from the speaking URL, for example. Or I think it's under the behavior tab. Yeah, right. This is, this is a great example of developer doing things. So there is a setting called include in search that we now need to disable. So if you think about it from a UX point of view, what you need to do is you need to actively select something to turn it off. And this, you know, like just doesn't cut it most of the time. Um, because you have a double negation in there, which makes the editor think through hoops for once. So if we take a look at the current version of Typo 3, which is going to be released, I think, three days from when we're shooting this video, so it might be a bit in the past from when you're watching this video, um, we came up with some new checkbox options, and we're going to walk you through those now. So. What I do, I have my style guide extension enabled, which we covered in an earlier video that you can find here, here, I guess, right? And if we go onto the basic elements tab and open up the first record that we have, <coughs> we have the checkbox tab. And here you can see how checkboxes are being rendered now within Typo 3. And you can see these are just standard checkboxes. They have a nice transition to them. They look a bit more sleek and modern. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see that we have active uh, and passive switches that you can move left to right in order to indicate whether something is enabled or disabled. Um, and there are also checkboxes with the label toggle. So we can have something enabled, then it's green, and we can have something disabled, then it's red. But how does this solve the problem that we addressed earlier with the double negation thing? So what you can do, and you can see this here in the checkbox single with toggled uh, inverted display, this checkbox actually is toggled off. But the visual display shows that it's actually enabled. So going back to the disable in search example, we could just now switch the label text going enable in search, make it green, even though in the database it's not enabled because it's a disabling flag. And this is useful for a transitional period where you can, you know, like fix a bad decision that you did in the past uh, or that you made in the past and then, you know, like cope with it for new editors because now everything is enabled by default, because this is how editors think. The checkbox has to be on. If you want to have it included in search, you want like a green check mark that says, yeah, it's included in search. And that we store the value zero in the database when it's enabled, and the value one for true in the database when it's disabled, that's just a technical solution um, a developer made back in the past and we can still work with this data to invert the state display and we're going to take a look at the TCA definition for that now so that you can know what you can work with. So we scroll down a bit into the configuration module all right and we don't want to save our changes and on the top here we can select the table configuration array um, and if we scroll down a bit, we have the TX style guide basic elements. And there's a lot of checkboxes here. 
And if we want to take a look at those checkboxes, we, I need to remember the numbers that we have. So it's checkbox 17, 18, and 19. So we go back to the configuration, and it was 17, 18, and 19. So if we take a look at those and we open up the config panel, so you can see it's still a checkbox of the type checkbox or check. It has the render type checkbox toggle, which makes the standard checkbox the toggle switch, the left and right one. And if we take a look at the items, open these up, you can see that normally what you would have, you would have the label and then an unused value, which is still a leftover that we're going to remove soon. And now what we did, we started adding um, named or keys for the, uh, for the array keys. So that it's, it's an associative array, which is easier to understand because personally, I always messed up what needs to be in the first array key and what needs to be in the second array key. And we're going to change this to named array keys. And what you can see here now is that it has a checked label, which is enabled, and the unchecked label is disabled. So this is the text that's being displayed. If we take a look at the next checkbox, the 18 one, there's a new setting in the item, which is inverted state display. And here, what the, what the editing uh, or the, the configuration module shows here is one, but actually you just set it to true, like PHP true. Um, and this is what you can use to invert the state display of the checkbox. So if you have a double negation thing going on, just invert the state and this works. And the good thing is that you can invert the state per item. So say you have five checkbox item, uh, items next to each other, then you can invert the state display for each single one of them if you choose to do so. So this is super helpful and we'll be starting rolling this out throughout core in our goal to uh, deliver the 9 LTS version. And if you have any input on this, hit us up, leave a comment in the section below where you think we should put in toggle boxes or simple, uh, simple check boxes or uh, labeled check boxes. Just let us know where you think we should do that. And that's it for this video and see you next time.